any country where there isn't crime, where social and economic inequalities don't lead to a struggle between classes and communities. I think we can all say safely that the answer to that question is no. So does anyone have the right to then sit in judgment on another nation and predict a dire future for it? At least India's answer to that question is again a resounding no. Which is why after the Prime Minister wrapped up his tour of America, India then chose to respond very strongly to former President of the United States, Barack Obama, on his comments about how India treats its minorities and what its future is going to be. What is more interesting is that Barack Obama got a pushback, not just from India, but closer back home. And it came from the former chief of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Listen in. I think the, the, former, the former president should spend, uh, spend his energy uh, complimenting India uh, more, than, more than criticizing uh, India. India is the most diverse country in human history. It's not a perfect country, just like the United States is not a perfect country, uh, but its diversity is its strength, and we should be complimenting uh, the largest democracy in the world every chance that we can that, that we have and so i i think uh um you know it, it was it was it was the time to celebrate a historic visit uh you know rather than uh rather than leveling some some criticism on it you know with your friends particularly when it comes to democracy with your friends um it's sometimes better to privately criticize and to publicly publicly praise that's good geopolitics uh, because uh, there, there are plenty of other people around the world that um, that want to uh, that want to demonstrate that this is a the twilight of democracy in in the world. It is not the twilight of democracy. It is a new dawn of of democracy. And so I, I uh, so all that to say, I, I, I disagree with the, uh, the sentiment of the former president. Now, it's important to pay attention to one specific part of what the human rights official in the United States just said. That India is not a perfect country. And it's true, everyone recognizes it. But the fact also is that no one is. Neither the United States, nor is France, nor is Australia. So the risk of India pulling apart is if the rights of minorities are not respected is as real as the risk of America pulling apart. For example, take a look at this. Mr. Obama's advice about minorities in India made me wonder about the West's record about the same. Here is what I found after a little research. In a 2011 meeting, when Barack Obama was the President of the United States, an organization called the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations and the League of Arab States identified Islamophobia as a major area of concern in the West. Subsequently, here are what the findings of a Gallup poll were. The poll found that globally, Muslims reported not feeling respected by those in the West. Specifically, 52% Americans and 48% Canadians said that the West does not respect Muslim societies. Similarly, a few years ago, Gallup asked people living in Muslim-majority countries about how they thought the West treated their community. 30% of the respondents said that Muslims were not treated as equals in the United States. Essentially, this means that the poll found that Muslims in general believe that unfair treatment of their community, a component of Islamophobia, did exist in Western societies. So what should India do then? Should India now turn around and lecture Barack Obama and brand all of America as Islamophobic and declare that very soon the United States will be pulling apart? No. The point of giving this data is again to underline that no country is perfect, neither India, no United States. Everyone has domestic problems, issues, disagreements that they deal with.
The thing though is not only what Barack Obama said as a sweeping generalization about the entire country, but also how a section of people who should know better, people in India, are gloating at what Obama said. Because for them, the former US president provides validation. Validation of what they have been claiming all this while, of what their politics rests on. That a Nazi India is now hurtling towards self-annihilation, thanks to its treatment of minorities. Who is this Barack Obama? These are the ones who came to this country, so Modi Ji said to me, Barack, my friend, and he called it bad for me. It was a joint press conference. Where is the so much closeness? और कहा वो सवाल पूछ रहे कि बताओ कि वहां आपके माइनॉरिटी पर जुल्म कौन हो रहा है आपकी वित्त मंत्री क्या बोल रही कि माइनॉरिटी पर वहां जब हमला हुआ था हे निर्मला जी वहां माइनॉरिटी नहीं वो मेजॉरिटी है मेजॉरिटी है और दो देशों में अगर किसी बात पर सैनिक एक दूसरे पर हमला करते हैं तो देश पे हमला होता है सीमाओं पर हमला होता है माइनॉरिटी मेजॉरिटी पे नहीं देखिए बाहर जो कुछ भी होता है मैं समझता हूँ कि उसमें लोग अपनी राय देते हैं बारे को बाबा ने जो कुछ कहा मेरा ख्याल है उसका हिसाब किताब भी उनको हमेशा देना पड़ता है लेकिन जो उन्होंने भारत के बारे में कहा उसका हिसाब किताब तो हम ही से लिया जाएगा ना तो हम तो सिर्फ ये कहना चाहते हैं निर्मला सीता जी अगर आज इतना बड़ा एक मोर्चा संभाली हुई है उन्हें यह ध्यान रखना चाहिए कि ये वही बारक मामा है जिनसे सबसे ज्यादा दोस्ती का दावा मोदी जी करते थे बहुत आर करेक्ट द इश्यूज रेज बाई मेनी मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इंक्लूडिंग ओबामा रिगार्डिंग द इशू ऑफ द माइनोरिटीज इन इंडिया ओबामा इज करेक्ट एज वेल एज सीतारमन इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट दट इन हिज टैन्योर मोर देन सिक्स मुस्लिम कंट्रीज वर अट्रैक्ट बाई द यूएस गवर्नमेंट so has mr obama been shown the mirror as it were by his own countrymen on human rights if minority rights remain as big a challenge in america and india then why are different standards being applied to both and most importantly why the rush within india by a few people to embrace obama's criticism only in order to show down your own country let me take this across to the panel joining us now tushar gupta senior editor at swaraj joins me along with zafar sarishwala former chancellor at maulana azad national urdu university kamar zaman choudhury leader of the congress advocate adil hasan spokesperson of the aimim and advocate talha amir rashadi spokesperson of the rashtriya ulema council i will start with you mr kamar zaman choudhury would you agree that what uh, the human rights official has said in america is running counter to the narrative that was being created in india you mute sir yes yeah go on go on yeah am i audible now loud and clear go on yeah basically the point that obama raised in america is uh, is not unfounded as such but he had no business to comment on how we as minorities are living in india that's the first number point second point that whatever obama has expressed his concern about the muslim minorities in india obama was immediately described as a hypocrite by modi finance minister saying he had bombed six islamic countries obama was mocked by modi cm of assam calling him hushan ama hushan obama so this is not the way how as a democracy we we work together to improve the conditions of course america and india have got lots of problems with dealing with the minorities it's a no hidden mm -hmm. fact even during the trump time you see post 911 we have seen how visas from uh, muslim countries were shadow banned were totally banned blanket ban was there on this the how the 1.1% population of the usa that is the muslim population are being treated even i was reading a pew research on this that most of the us muslims are dissatisfied with direction of the country they are because they are wary of trump how it's it's the situation like this but then padwaja as a democracy as a functional democracy if we at all want to call it can we can we just shoot the messenger if somebody from america is showing us the mirror is it not that we introspect and say that okay fine the muslims in india are not that much as uh, free as the world will want it to be there are instances when 
when when uh, certain certain cultures were uh, denounced sir, i am i am a little confused you are you are basically saying you are basically you you are basically just agreeing that there are problems of we need to discuss and debate we are discussing and debating that is what we do every evening that is why we are a great democracy as opposed to what christian amonfort said that we are an illiberal democracy and illiberal democracy would have said to hell with what anyone is saying we will not allow anyone in india to talk about it we are perfect we will not hear otherwise we literally sit on tv every day and we debate about whether there is any substance to what mr obama said but Obviously, data points yeah, out Padmanda. data points out mr choudhury and you agree that what mr obama has said is very far from the truth he no, is obama, predicting that india is going to obama pull sir you yourself agreed that muslims in america have faced discrimination they have said that they do not have the kind of religious freedom that they would like then how is it that he predicted india is set to quote unquote pull apart while his own country is not no padmaja there is a difference a stark difference between the two dog whistling of muslims in india is a normal thing now Unlike the U.S., where even a small racist comment will land you in jail, for sure there is a difference. Where the state is complicit by silence against the atrocities of Muslims in India, leave aside a few Urdu-sounding Muslims that are uh, aligned to the ruling dispensation. I am not talking about them. But you see the policies that the government has brought about, like the policies of, uh, let's say, hijab ban, or let's say the the, the, uh, the criminalization of the triple talaq ban. Then you you know, sir. Actually, it's very testing. funny that All you use the word you use the word so liberally. Board. Hijab ban. India actually doesn't have a hijab ban. You know, a country which has banned the hijab, it's France. India, however illiberal you might call it, has not banned the hijab. Do you also course, know? By the way, hold on a second. Do you also know? Hold on a second. Do you know that in 2009 since we are talking about liberal democracies and illiberal democracies illiberal ones which are going to annihilate in the near future like India and liberal ones like France like the rest of Europe like you know America South America let me quote you another example from the liberal Europe do you know in 2009 the largest party in Swiss parliament actually put to referendum a proposal to ban the construction of all minarets this is switzerland this is not illiberal india in switzerland 60% of the swiss voters and 22 out of 26 voting districts said yes no minarets should be made in all of switzerland it should be banned so padma luckily you, this referendum did not go through sir but i don't no. hear anyone Barack Obama or you saying we must introspect this is the illiberal democracies we lived in nobody is predicting the end of switzerland nobody is predicting the end of france padmaja do you want to set the template of the european countries to how india treats its minorities are you just you said that angry. you want to be shown we have been shown the mirror by obama i am no, saying no, i would much are, rather i said we would I we are looking first, into the mirror Indian, every day sir i do not need advice from anybody to how the country should be run but then this obama's command has gaslighted so many in the ecosystem that there of course needs to be an introspection are the muslims but in india why should you really, introspect based really on what mr obama says when his own country's record vis-a-vis -vis islamophobia has been called out by the muslims in his own country if we i just oh, showed I... you the gallup poll sir in the year that he was the president of the united states 50% of the muslims said they weren't treated as equals in the us 50% of the will muslims you, will you permit me an uninterrupted 30 seconds please if you don't mind let me just point you some of the policies that the government has taken out in the recent past okay and, wait and we will come to each policy i am very happy to debate each policy one by one let's start with your opening premise zafar sarishwala that instead of gaslighting barack obama and being petulant about what he said he has just shown us the mirror why can't you introspect see padma ja uh, the poll which you have shown and this is my view since years because i have lived in europe i have lived in united kingdom and i have also lived in the us 
the kind of islamophobia which i have seen forget about these polls the kind of islamophobia okay we seem to have lost the line mr sareshwala uh, tushar gupta would you want to come in on this on the issue of why be so defensive about what obama uh, said Uh, a very good evening padmaja tad bit early this evening uh, you know the houses that were bombed by barack obama in his presidency were marked for their religion and the houses that were built by prime minister narendra modi in the last 9 years did not care for anyone's religion that's the stark difference between president barack obama and prime minister narendra modi now kamruzumar choudhry has says that why are we gaslighting barack obama but what he doesn't realize that barack obama is an extension of the ecosystem started with george bush which believed in bombing half of the middle east to convince the world that there were indeed weapons of mass destruction there two decades later the us has left afghanistan in a terrible condition with the taliban taking over suppressing women rights they left ukraine to feed for its own self they're going to leave taiwan also like that Barack Obama as the president of the Democratic Party and as the president of the United States for 8 years followed by the term of Joe Biden which is into its third year now hasn't been able to do anything about black lives the kind of subjugation that minority community feels in their country they haven't been able to do about anything about gun violence in their schools padmaja kindergarten kids are not safe in america schools hmm. and yet barack obama in an interview to cnn has the audacity to say that it will india it is india that is going to fall apart now i am a very meaning very patriotic indian i have a problem with barack obama's comments not because of what he believes in but what he implies but i'm not saying that you were very happy with obama i'm not saying a decade ago the same government a decade ago tushar gupta the same government was toasting him was walking with him arm in arm in delhi then there was no problem in him no a decade ago the priorities of the democratic party were also very different a decade ago how the democratic party perceived india was also very different but much of the problem is today india is asserting itself on the global stage it no longer wants to play second fiddle either to china or to america hmm. the problem today that the democratic party has is that we did not toe the us line when it came to the sanctions on russia we refused their demand to not buy russian oil when the war in ukraine broke out last year so the outcome you see the comments you see from the democratic party leaders hmm. or the entire ecosystem or the deep state whatever you want to call it in this case being represented by obama is an outcome of that the more india asserts itself on the global stage the hmm. more such comments will come and you will wonder that a decade ago these people were looking at india oh. differently oh, okay. they were looking at narendra modi or dr manmohan singh differently hmm. and suddenly their stance has changed but india must continue to assert itself and i'm very happy padmaja i'm very happy that some of the cabinet leaders have called out the hypocrisy of barack obama because you cannot bomb half of the middle east into oblivion with the problems of which have spilled over to europe mind you and mm. then lecture india as to how to be a pluralistic society as to how to be a country where the rights of the minorities are safeguarded mm. that is not how it works and we shouldn't see it as gaslighting obama mm. in fact if anyone is showing the mirror to obama it is indian citizens and it indian is not about it is not just about the individual talhara shadi it is about your agenda your motives and india is questioning the motives at this point and saying what you are saying simply doesn't add up that is not gaslighting that is statement of fact a very good evening to everyone on the panel and to you too padmaja uh but we have need to have an uh, more humanitarian approach to what mr barack obama has said mr barack obama as per my information is a very close friend of uh, our honorable prime minister mr modi and when someone a uh, very close friend of mine you know is advises something or criticizes me instead of you know getting rattled or instead of reacting in the same tone i would be better doing introspection and introspection whether uh, do a self analysis to see whether if the criticism of my, a very close friend of mine is a truth or not so if mr obama feels something and if he has said so if you go through the tweet of the chief minister of assam on the very same day the tone of the tweet would give you a insight of what is happening in india 
you just go through the tweet of the what Assam is Chief happening Minister. in india you what need, is you happening need to go in india the As a person of his caliber sitting on a constitutional post says something like that in his tweet what is the tone of that tweet that will give an insight of the the reality the, what is the, happening the in india reality. let's not let's you not to, engage in generalization you need to go through the tweet i don't want what to see what is happening the thing in is india that being an indian the thing is that being an indian citizen if someone from another country somehow criticizes me as an indian i don't accept that but you cannot run away from the truth we need to do our self into inspection what is we need the to truth? do our self realization sir we need what to is see. the okay, you these cannot, are big you words be, let what? me conclude let me let me what is the you truth? cannot be you cannot become a super power you cannot become a vishu guru by isolating a community of your own countrymen by marginalizing them what is happening in india is very well known to everyone you know the same very day on the same day when mr modi was in us we have seen uh, malvi being arrested just for offering prayers in his own coaching a coaching a private coaching owned by a person an individual he cannot offer namaz in his own coaching we saw the news of you know a church being ransacked by bajrang dal and bhp people in akbarpur so these happens these events these events you know you, in the era of social media in the era of twitter facebook and everything online you cannot you hide these things this okay. reality so you you the, you think you think is, that not, these law and order you know, issues Barack sir parakabad is a hero of a community he has done far more he has done far more bad to muslim throughout the globe than compared to us but something you cannot you know just go and with what about it just to these people sitting on the panel they have indirectly now to, tonight they are defending taliban indirectly the person speaking speaking to me before nobody has, is defending taliban taliban nobody is defending taliban what one is defending US actually is how america help taliban come to power by abandoning the afghans when the going got rough for them sir they are the biggest let down for the muslim world because one after the other yes. they have picked up yes. countries who are somewhat yes, functional democracies bombed yes, them into the middle ages and left them in the clutches India. of the muslim brotherhood or the taliban and that is certainly not doing any service to any muslims or to humanity as a yes, whole I agree, I agree, but I agree, I agree, but let me give you one specific example and then bring back zafar sarishwala because we are talking about why can't we introspect when you mr rashadi talk about isolated incidents which yes are a serious law and order concern and extrapolate it to say that barack obama is right in saying that we are very soon going to pull apart let me just debunk a few of these isolated incidents which are extrapolated for example what are the examples quoted muslims houses are being bulldozed even if an atiq ahmed gets killed it is called the murder of a muslim not of a gangster not of a mafia not of a criminal but of a muslim in the case of bulldozer action let me just quote to you what has happened in this Dude, last one week sir so one week let me let me actually show you those images in the last one week the house of rakesh yadav a gangster was bulldozed in gorakhpur few days later on the 25th of june the house of mafia vinod upadhyay his brother sanjay upadhyay house was brought down also in gorakhpur now you will say oh if atik ahmed house is being brought down what about hindus well you have a mr upadhyay and you have a mr yadav who unfortunately were mafia just like atik ahmed and here is a bulldozer at their house but why can't you introspect zafar sarishwala please continue see uh, padmaja as i was talking earlier the kind of islamophobia which i have seen i mean i don't even need any gallup poll in france in germany in uh, 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 netherlands and in belgium you have to go and see the squalid condition in which today even today muslims are living you can't imagine whether those areas belong to paris whether it is uh, munich whether it is a uh, uh, belgium i mean muslims are living in squalid conditions and the kind of islamophobia in west we don't have remotely in india it is there now what i am saying is and what mr barack obama himself said that no democracy is perfect and i agree that yes we are not a perfect democracy we have 
issues uh, the kind of which you have been mentioning which a lot of people have been mentioning i mean yes these are law and order serious law and order issues which need to be curbed yes but you have to imagine that we are a country of 1.4 billion a country which is five times in size of pakistan such things do happen but to say or to extrapolate that this is the norm in the country i think this is this is far fetched but this is also true i mean i am in washington dc today i was talking to a lot of people yesterday the muslim said that the irony is what maximum killings of muslims has always happened under the democratic party and it is absolutely correct that mr obama's regime he uh, muslims were bombed in afghanistan muslims were bombed in syria muslims were bombed in uh, uh, libya muslims were bombed in iraq so this is a fact now yes i accept that these are countries but mm. these are muslim 100% muslim majority countries so this is the irony and he said that the other irony is that the president who's considered to be most anti muslim is trump but in trump's tenure not a single muslim has been killed so this is the irony so i don't accept mm. and i don't believe that yes we are a perfect democracy we have our flaws and the best reply would be that what's happening in the country positive towards muslims or plus minus should be directly shown to mr obama <laughs> i think we don't need to get perturbed with that we just need to go and show him mm. this is it and i think prime minister modi's reply in that uh, you know where he was asked about the muslim condition i think if you would have been illiberal democracy then mr modi was said would have said oh i don't reply to such questions come on but mr modi chose to reply in a way whatever he uh, uh, deems fit and i think it was quite reassuring so with that reply of mr modi hmm. i feel that yes we are not an illiberal democracy we are liberal democracy but we have some problems and which lot of countries in the world do have not a single person individual party country can claim that they are perfect and if they are let's be very clear that they are lying advocate adil hasan if you want to be shown the mirror be shown the mirror by barack obama or be shown the mirror by the grand mufti of the mosque in egypt depends on who you choose आदिल साहब या तो आप बराक ओबामा की बात सुन लीजिए या फिर आप ग्रैंड मुफ्ती की बात सुन लीजिए चॉइस आपकी है दोनों ही एक तरीके का मिरर दिखा रहे मैम दो मैम दोनों की बात नहीं सुनना है मुझे देश की बात सुनना है मैं पूछना चाह रहा हूं परम आदरणीय मोदी जी से कि बतलाए कि 40 परसेंट माइनिटी का बजट निर्मला सीतारमन मोहतरमा ने क्यों घटा दिया मोमा का स्कॉलरशिप क्यों घटा दिया प्री मैट्रिक पोस्ट मैट्रिक क्यों घटा दिया अलीगढ़ मुस्लिम यूनिवर्सिटी किशनगंज को पैसा नौ साल में क्यों नहीं दिया तिब्बी कॉलेज एमयू का स्कॉलरशिप क्यों बंद हो गया मौलाना आजाद फाउंडेशन का स्कॉलरशिप क्यों बंद हो गया अभी जो हाजी लोग गए हैं सऊदी अरब उसमें इतना मिसमैनेजमेंट क्यों आ रहा है मोहतरमा स्मृति ईरानी दो दो मंत्रालय संभाली हुए क्यों नहीं ध्यान दे रही है मैं पूछना चाह रहा हूँ जाके मणिपुर में प्रधानमंत्री एक दिन चले जाए तो वहां शांति बहाल कर दे उत्तर प्रदेश में एक कोचिंग सारे, के अंदर एक आदमी पढ़ रहा है अपनी कोचिंग में पढ़ रहा है उसको गिरफ्तार आप कर रही हैं आदिल साहब एक्चुअली जो आपने सारे सवाल पूछे ना को संरक्षण हरियाणा सरकार दे रही है मैडम इसका इंडिविजुअली जवाब दिया गया है लेट मी एक्चुअली आपने आपने बहुत जबरदस्त सवाल पूछे बट आई सस्पेक्ट यू ऑलरेडी नो द आंसर टू दिस बट ऑल ऑफ दीज आर रैटर्ड ऑफ without going into specifics because you know the specifics are not going to suit your politics so adil sahab let me start let me start let me start i am very willing to have a one on one debate on each issue when you talk about are sir when you talk about pre metric post metric aapne sawal pucha hai iska government data available hai ki izazat hai iska government data available hai aapne kyunki sawal pucha hai 25 minute baad 25 second mila hai sir the viewers should not be left in the dark second mila hai the viewers should not be left in the dark so give me 30 seconds pre metric post metric scholarship i am ready to debate i am ready to debate on all the issue okay to so listen to the answer because data is available debate, hold on please give me 30 seconds of silence pre metric the pre metric budget was reduced from 1425 crores to 433 crores there is a reduction in that but what you will not be told by the aimim is that the budget for the post metric was increased from 515 crores 
to 1065 crores an increase of 106.8% you know why because this rationalization was done by the government to say that most of the education in pre matric is covered under right to education it's free we would much rather bump up the post matric budget this data is easily available for anyone who chooses to go out and read it unless it doesn't suit politics but go on adil sahab ye ek chhota sa pre matric post matric ka budget kyun kam badhaya gaya hai uska maine jawab diya kyunki data available tha adil sahab ma'am ma'am is adat ja ke aap bade aadar purvak kehna chahta hu jamia aur aligarh muslim university ka dono ka budget pichle saal ghata diya gaya is sarkar mein ये एक सच्चाई है अलीगढ़ मुस्लिम यूनिवर्सिटी का डिमांड करते करते किशनगंज के लिए पिछले नौ साल में हमने पार्लियामेंट में बैरिस्टर असदुद्दीन ओवैसी साहब ने कितनी बार बोला एक रुपया सरकार ने नहीं दिया है आप सबका साथ सबका विश्वास करते एक भी मुसलमान मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट बीजेपी में नहीं है एक भी मिनिस्टर नहीं है बीजेपी में आजाद भारत में पहली बार ऐसा हुआ है जब एक भी मुसलमान मिनिस्टर नहीं है एक भी मुसलमान एमपी नहीं है ये इनका ढकोसला है केरला में जाकर चर्च में फादर से मिलते और मणिपुर में चर्चों को जलाया okay. जा रहा है सरकार के मुंह में दही जमी हुई है पैतालीस दिन हो गए मणिपुर में आप कुछ नहीं कर पाए so, राष्ट्रपति शासन नहीं लगा फॉलो अप पूछना चाहती हूँ कर पा रहे आप चाइना अग्री कुछ वैसे तो इस एक एक इश्यू का मैं आपको एक्सप्लेनेशन दे सकती हूँ अगेन विच इज वेरी पब्लिक नॉलेज बट इससे आप मानते हैं कि इंडिया अब पुल अपार्ट हो जाएगी क्योंकि इंडिया एकदम खत्म होने के कगार पे है क्योंकि यहां माइनॉरिटीज की कोई पूछ नहीं है यू अग्री विद दैट इंडिया हमेशा रहेगा इंडिया हमेशा रहेगा बीजेपी कांग्रेस नहीं रहेगी इंडिया तो हमेशा रहेगा क्यामत के सुबह तक इंडिया रहेगा मैडम इंडिया को कोई नहीं दबा सकता इंडिया की आमद के सुबह तक रहेगा लेकिन मोदी जी भी जाएंगे कांग्रेस भी जाएगी सब जाएगी हम भी जाएंगे लेकिन ये देश रहेगा भारत रहेगा और भारत उतना बुलंद रहेगा भारत की तरक, तरक्की और उन्नति पे कोई क्वेश्चन मार्क नहीं उठा सकता और ये देश हमारा है हमारे पूर्वजों ने जान दिया इस देश के लिए इसलिए भारत महान है था है और रहेगा इसमें मोदी जी का कोई योगदान नहीं है आपको आपको योगदान या क्रेडिट या श्रेय देने की जरूरत भी नहीं है बट आई थिंक दिस फ्रॉम द ए आई एम एम इज द परफेक्ट आंसर एंड द परफेक्ट मिरर टू एनी वन हुज बीन क्रिटिसाइजिंग पिगी बैकिंग ऑन वोट बुराक ओबामा सेट दी अदर पर्सन हुज शोन द मिर जेंटलमैन प्लीज बेयर विद मी बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट गो अक्रॉस टू मिस्टर जॉनी मोर हुज द फॉर्मर कमिश्नर ऑफ द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स कमीशन फॉर ह्यूमन राइट्स द पर्सन who has all of india talking about him first tell me mr moore what prompted you to respond to what president obama said well someone asked me the question and i i gave i gave my opinion because that's what you do in a in a in a democracy and uh, and unfortunately we're living in a moment where uh, a lot of people are trying to degrade democracies all all around the world and i and i really took issue with the former president not not that he answered the question you know you answer you answer these questions but this was the the wrong thing to say at the wrong at the wrong time and so i i just said it because that's what americans do when they disagree with the opinions of their leaders now president obama said that if the rights of minorities are not respected very soon india could pull apart what do you make of this prediction I don't think India is pulling apart. I, I, I think, I, in fact, I think the United States can learn a lot from India in how to to uh, to manage a very, very uh, di- diverse, diverse country. And, and in fact, I think the opposite is true. I, I think the diversity of India, in, in what I just witnessed, you know, moments ago, the vibrant debate on this on this very television program, the debate that's happening across the media in India. This is the strength of India, not the weakness of India. It only makes India. stronger and and unfortunately many people in my own country a country i love i don't like to criticize my own country but many many people who haven't been to india or haven't spent sufficient time in india don't fully comprehend the diversity of of the world's most diverse most pluralistic country the single most diverse country in in, in human history and so you know i always encourage people when when they when they disagree with my own point of view my next question is have you been to india have you have you traveled around uh, the 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 whole of the of the subcontinent have you sat down with hindus and christians and muslims and sikhs and jains have you had have you have you ridden in rickshaws have you have you sat down and had tea uh, with with the the first person that sees you that wants to welcome you in and have have a conversation the united states is not a perfect country india is not a perfect country 
but many Americans and many others in the West really, really misunderstand India. You just have to, you have to experience India to understand India. What do you think is the reason for this misunderstanding? A prejudice or an agenda? You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like to put motives on, 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 on people, but, uh, but normally, and you know, I'm, I'm not casting a motive on, on, on the former president, but normally it's a combination of the two. It's a, it's a calcified view of, of whatever you're talking about. Uh, and there's also on the other side of it, a, 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 a political agenda. I have no opinion on politics uh, in, in India. I'm an American. It's, I, I, I believe in Indian democracy. I, I, I saw Indian democracy with my own eyes uh, in the United States the last, the last couple of days. Uh, when, I, when I met with the prime minister, I, I told him, I said, Mr. Prime Minister, you performed a miracle in the United States of America. You brought Democrats and Republicans together in the most polarized time in American history. That's the magic of India, and that's the magic of democracy, and that's the magic of the United States of America. Uh, and, and this is a time to be complementing our, our democracies around the world, not throwing an ounce of shade on them whatsoever. And it isn't like the former president of the United States can't pick up the phone and call whoever he wants to call uh, to, to level privately his, uh, his, his point of view. I, I thought it was a, a remarkably un, unwise uh, in, in inopportune comment from someone who frankly should know, should know better. And by the way, that doesn't change my respect for our former president, but uh, this was a mistake. Uh, what do you make of the timing? You've, you've said that it was unwise. Uh, do you think it was timed for the Prime Minister of India's visit to the United States? I mean, for mo most politicians in the United States, I would say it was an accident. Uh, but, but, but President Obama is uh, as brilliant a figure as has ever occupied uh, the, the White House uh, in, in the United States of America. And so it's hard to believe uh, it, it, was, it was an accident. I'm not going to impugn motives on him, but uh, but I think he should clarify uh, his 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 point of view. And if he's got criticisms for India, one of the luxuries of being a former head of state is you can contact whoever you want to contact directly. You pick up the phone and call them. And it seems like that didn't happen. It, it seems like in a, in a passing interview at a, at the moment when we should have been demonstrating to the entire world uh, that there is no daylight uh, between the democracies. Uh, in in the world, uh, the, the 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 comment was the comment was ill timed. And here's a fact: uh, th this is not a, a time of weakening democracy uh, in in our world. It's a time of strengthening democracy because in juxtaposition in all kinds of places all over the world, we're seeing uh, a comparison between the between the between the two systems. And what I saw in the United States with the prime minister's visit. Uh, and when I saw the stature of, of, of the Prime Minister and of the Republic of India uh, in, in Cairo uh, in, in reporting uh, immediately afterwards, it, it was clear uh, India is a confident, confident nation. Its diversity is its strength, and we should be celebrating that. And I celebrate it as well. Uh, and, and all of our leaders should be, should be celebrating it. Do you think that India is being held to different standards? We just put out some data, for example, on how Muslims perceived Islamophobia in the West, not just in the United States, but in other European countries. And yet, such predictions about countries pulling apart was never made. Why the different standards for India? You know, I, I don't know. I, I thought there were a thousand things that the that the former president could have said, and I thought that com that that comment was particularly um, particularly uh, egregious. I, I'm not worried about India pulling apart. I I, I I think India's democracy is going to be just fine. I, I think the vibrancy of debate is apparent on this very program. It's apparent on the debate all around this conversation. Uh, I I I think religion actually can play a very constructive role. Now, look, if you're if you're an extremist. You know, if you're an extremist in the United States or the United Kingdom, you know that's that's different. You you if you break the law, you break you break the law. We all have uh, these rules in all of our Western and and democratic countries. But I, I I think Western leaders have a lot to learn from India, and I think some Western figures have a really really difficult time understanding the country. In America, you know, we have 330, 360 million, 380 million people that mainly all speak the same language you know a couple of tens of millions speak spanish as well we have two political parties i mean india has has that much diversity on one corner in new delhi okay there are thousands of political parties there are thousands of languages in single states you know all, all across the country 
And I think this is the time for Americans to come to India as students of India. Let's build relationships. You know, there'll be moments of disagreement. There've been moments I disagree with things happening in India, just as in, in India, people disagree with some things happening here, but you deal with those in a, in a respectful way. India is a, a confident country uh, entering into a golden age of prosperity that's evident in every direction. It was the compliment of the president of the United States in every opportunity he had. It was a compliment of his of his opposition in every opportunity uh, that was had. Prime Minister Modi is, had just as equal reception from Donald Trump as he did from President from President Biden. That is the that is the reality. It's up for the for the Republic of India to decide who you know who, who's in charge of the country and who they vote for in Parliament and all and what laws that they pass and all of those things. Uh, it's as it is up for the United States to make those choices. Mm. But in this moment, it's, t it's time for democracies to stand together. And I, I was I, I thought it very, very unwise uh, for a, a leader as astute as our, our former president to make that comment as he did when he did, uh, when it seemed like everybody else was on the same page, including everyone in his own own party in the White House. Uh, you've obviously had interaction uh, with uh, India as well. What do you make of the either the, the development of democracy, how do you think India's graph has been vis-a-vis -vis personal freedoms, the democratic index, especially over the last one decade? I, I, I think we need, a, we need a whole different rubric to measure, measure India. Uh, what, what elite people in the West like to do is they like to look at certain countries and they, uh, when, when, you watch a, uh, when you watch a cricket match you know, or, 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 or soccer or football, uh, at the end of the match, you have the highlight reels and you have the blooper reels, right? You have the things that, that everybody wish didn't happen and all the wonderful things that did happen. And it, it seems like, you know, we like to, we, we, we like to celebrate our highlight reels uh, and point at the blooper reels of other, of other places. You know, I'm amazed that India, uh, the country the size of it is, the size that it is, 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 is able to manage the country as, as it does, and that has only improved. The Indian democracy is strengthening. The Indian systems are strengthening. The robust debate between the political parties is strengthening. The vibrancy of religion is adding to that. Some people take it too far. When those people take it too far, India has a pristine constitution that makes it clear what the repercussions of that, of that should be. And so the United States should be expending its energy in collaborating with India to make our world a better place, not in criticizing uh, India in, in, in public for, uh, for, what, for what purpose? Just so, you know, just so uh, they get celebrated by, by someone. How does, it, how does it help anything you know, whatsoever? What helps something is when Indians and Americans learn from one another. And that's what helped me. I was a Christian. I grew up in the deep south of the United States. I am a Christian. Grew up in the deep south in the United States. I had never been exposed to a culture different than my own. A friend of mine invited me to India. I learned about Hinduism and Varanasi. I learned about Buddhism and Dharamsala and Sarnath. I went to Pushkar in Ajmer in Agra. I, 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 I met a, a Jain renunciate on a random street in Rajasthan as a parade was happening that was celebrating him. And me as an American from the oldest democracy uh, in, in the world, the wealthiest country in human history, the most powerful country uh, in human history, uh, my life was incredibly, incredibly enriched. And, and this is why I resonated with the prime minister's comment uh, uh, in, uh, on his visit to the, to the White House and to the Congress, that the sky isn't even the limit. Uh, when it comes to Indian and American uh, cooperation. It is the right thing that we need at the right time in the world that we're living in. And it's not about what America can give to India, what America can benefit from India. It's about what America can learn from India, how Americans can be educated from the diversity of India. And then when we build relationships, yeah, you pick up the phone if you disagree on something. You don't go in an international media outlet when the whole world is on one page uh, and, 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 and decide to... Uh, um, uh, to, to make an inopportune phrase um, that gives a misimpression about the strength of our, our, our two democracies. Fair enough. You know, uh, you, you've spoken about how vibrant, you know, we literally have a book here called The Argumentative Indian because that's what we do. We have differences, we have problems, we argue about it, sometimes very vocally like you just heard and volubly right here on the channel. But yet, year on year, we've had the... Human Rights Commission of the United States government put out a report that talks about problems when it comes to free speech, to freedom of religion in India. Every year, the U.S. United States uh, yeah. State Department uh, puts out that report. 
Yeah, I, I think it. I think it just speaks for itself when you have um, uh, when, when you have certain figures uh, that want to uh, compare India uh, to 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 countries like North Korea and the Islamic Republic of Iran and to the Communist Party of China. I mean, to to make that comparison just discredits it uh, from uh, from from the beginning. That's why I uh, when I when I served on the commission, one of the beautiful things about the United States of America. Uh, is you can have your own point of view and in the legislation that created the commission it, it allows commissioners to have their own point of view and i made my view clear which is i do not believe that india deserved that uh, that designation however you know it is a wake-up call perhaps to some indians um, that that the vibrancy of their own debate uh, is sometimes misinterpreted uh, in in the west and that's why people to people exchanges are really really important that we build the relationship between our our country so that when there are misunderstandings there there are better ways of 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 dealing with those with those misunderstandings uh, and 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 by the way you know at the, at this at this present time there's a unique opportunity basically in whatever field in religion in cultural engagement and in, in in the economy uh, it after after what happened in the United States last week, which was a historic partnership, unlike frankly anything any American has ever seen uh, with a with a with a foreign head of state, uh, not only in the way the red carpet was rolled out to India, but the way the whole economic infrastructure of the entire United States of America was sitting at tables uh, for the purpose of negotiating relationships. Uh, this is the time for Indians and for Americans to take full advantage of the opportunity before us. And it's not just an opportunity for peace in our world and for prosperity among our nations. Mm. Uh, it literally is the most important thing happening happening in the world, because what you, everything you love about India and everything I love about the United States can only be preserved when our two countries partner together. And we saw that. And, and, I, and frankly, whether, whether you're uh, in, in the Republic of India and Prime Minister Modi is your preferred prime minister or not, every Indian ought to be very, very proud of what happened uh, in, the, in the last, the last uh, couple of days. As every American, whether President Biden was their preferred president or not, ought to be very proud of what happened in Washington, D.C. the last few days. So would you say also then that the USCIRF report uh, has a fair amount of politics going on? Because just to quote from a few of the reports, uh, it says for this year, in 2022, religious freedom conditions in India continued to worsen throughout the year. The Indian government at the national, state, local levels promoted and enforced religiously discriminatory policies and so on and so forth. As somebody who's been a member, who has been the commissioner for the USCIRF, do you think the findings could also be political more than factual? I think this politics mixed in, mix in all of this. And, and by the way, the politics are exacerbated uh, by, the, by the fact that um, there, there are, uh, you know, the commission is made up of, of not just one commissioner. It's made up of of, uh, of nine nine commissioners. Uh, most of those commissioners have never visited India. When, when I when I issued my um, my my comments uh, in in uh, on on the report, my alternative my alternative point of view, I did it with uh, with two others. I did it with a commissioner who uh, was born in India, a, a Tibetan Buddhist who also also agreed with me. I did it alongside a um, a, a colleague. Uh, 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 Gary, Gary Bauer. We need more engagement. However, you know the the uh, the. I I think I think what we ought to do in the aftermath of some of this controversy, you know, is is bring in leaders from all around the world to experience India uh, themselves, and that includes some prominent critics of India in the United States of America who who haven't haven't seen with their own eyes what what I've what I've seen. Uh, and what others have seen. And again, that's not to say it's it's a it's perfect. As I said, the United States isn't perfect. No democracy, no democracy is perfect. But we're talking past each other rather than working on um, uh, making our countries uh, better uh, better together. So there are plenty of things in that report that I disagree with. And so I said it because I live in a I live in a in a democracy, and uh, and that's that's something that we can all uh, we can all all celebrate. But here's a fact: the vast majority of, of people, you pick the minority community um, in in India, and the vast majority of of of, of people in those communities, um, they are frustrated, as 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 lots of other people are, by this by this criticism because they're just living their normal everyday life. You know, they're working their jobs, they're voting for their preferred candidates. They're, they're trying to get their kids in school. You know, they're they're having their their normal experience, building their life in a in a country that they love, and and 
and their story is being told for themselves, you know, by, um, you know, by, by this disagreement and by a small group, a small group of activists. Uh, I, a very good Muslim friend of mine in the Gulf, he always tells me something. He says, ignorance is the enemy of peace. And that is the sentiment I, I uh, experience in my own uh, meeting with with, um, uh, with 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 the prime minister. He was very very passionate about educating Americans on 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 India, and unfortunately, um, many Americans uh, don't, don't travel uh, to to Asia, and certainly not to India unless you're an Indian American. And I, I think the lesson for all of us, whatever your political party. Uh, it, you know, whatever your view on all of these things is, ignorance is always the enemy enemy of peace. And the most important question isn't what you know about something; it's what you don't know about something. And and everyone believes what they believe for a reason. And so, you know, you don't you don't know why you believe what you believe until you know why people disagree with you. And we can solve all of those things in the immediate aftermath of um, uh, of of the prime minister's visit to the United States with the warm deepening relations between our country. It's unfortunate the former president uh, threw shade on that, but he is the former president. Okay. And so uh, now it's up to the rest of us everyday people uh, to, to do our part to strengthen the friendship between America uh, and between the, the, the great, brilliant, diverse, incredible um, Republic of India uh, who, whose, whose history uh, goes back thousands and thousands and thousands of years and there's a lot that we can learn from it fascinating to have spoken to you mr johnny moore thanks very much you spoke of ignorance being the enemy of peace now imagine if you have a fair sprinkling of political agendas added to that as well pleasure we're really happy we could get your voice uh, to the people of india let me get in our guests for a quick reaction to this kamar zaman Chaudhary. lucid lucid explanation of what Mr. Obama said and what Americans, a vast majority of them, could be thinking about it. Statement as you want to take it, but then for every Johnny Moore, you have a Riyadh Chakraborty or a Anjana Chatterjee. Am I audible? Yes, go on, sir. Yeah, because uh, there are thousands and thousands of Americans on other side of the divide also who think that uh, U.S. should not bargain away their human rights and democracy for political experience. That's a statement coming out from a lot of uh, civil rights groups from the U.S. Now okay. the question here is that do we discuss the Democrats and the Liberals out there, Republicans out there, or discuss what's happening inside India, whether the state is complicit in its discriminative policies mm. towards a section of the society, whether a section of the society is being politically isolated with a, with a, with a intention of keeping them isolated mm. from the political mainstream from getting the benefits of the India being the largest democracy in the world. Or, here's a thought, maybe we go by neither, because at the end of the day, they're all politicians. We go by what the facts tell us. I'll leave it at that, gentlemen, for having been so patient. Thanks very much for joining me on India Upfront.